watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Thanks for watching us on this Wednesday for DC News Now at 4. I'm Mark Hall. And I'm Elisa Gale. Our top story, we're getting a closer look at the damage left behind following last night's storm, which caused flooding, power outages, and more throughout the DMV, Mark. Yeah. In Old Town Alexandria, several feet of standing water shut down parts of the neighborhood streets. That's where you find Northern Virginia reporter Haley Mylon. She's joining us live. And Haley, what have you noticed the day after? Annalisa Mark, the water is mostly gone, which is hard to believe. Just a couple of puddles here on King Street just by the river. This time about 22 hours ago, tough to believe, but I would have been up close to my waist in water where I'm standing right now. Now, a lot of businesses and uh, uh, establishments down here use sandbags and other protective measures to prepare for the water levels, and most did okay, actually. A lot are open today. This Starbucks didn't fare so well. I'm told that they have some electrical issues and some plumbing issues, so that Starbucks is now closed today. All along the streets of Old Town all day, I've heard the sounds of vacuums running to get water out of the businesses here. Now, a block over from where we are at another coffee shop, staff sealed off their doorfront with inflatable barriers. Now, the general manager tells me it worked pretty well. They're some of the lucky ones. I know there's a few down the street that I got hit really bad um, that had more water coming up through the foundation and stuff. They're still doing cleanup, but I think for the most part, most of us got lucky. Now across Northern Virginia, about 20,000 Dominion Energy customers lost power at some point last night. Most of that service has been restored, but coming up at 5 o'clock, we'll take a deeper look at the damage that crews are still dealing with and tell you about the concerns that the community is facing coming into another stormy weekend. For now in Old Town, I'm Haley Mylon, DC News Now. All right, Haley, thanks so much. Well, in Prince George's County, flooding continues to remain an issue there after this powerful storm. Park officials say that the trail hit hardest was Paint Branch Trail and Lakeland Park location there. It's living up to its name with the amount of rain that it got there. If you plan on visiting a park or walking trail, make sure you stay alert for some damage that may be left behind. And Annalisa, what a difference a day makes. A live look outside right now at the Washington Monument. Sunnier skies, no rain in sight, at least for now. But let's head over to meteorologist Damon Matson. With the first look at our forecast. Damon, it was nice to see that sunshine this morning. <laughs> yes, quite a change a day can make here with that storm system quickly exiting out of here, giving us a little bit of a chance to catch our breath, start to clean things up a little bit after all of that rain and the wind that we experienced. Now, there are still multiple flood warnings everywhere. You have a light green box here across the DMV. Those are ongoing flood warnings as those river levels are still very very much elevated as they're trying to catch up from all of this rain that we picked up just yesterday. There you have a warning in Prince George's County, most of Prince William County under a flood warning as well. But the good news is these river levels should start to drop and we will see these flood warnings expire in due time now that we have some quieter weather in place. Now the one thing that has been lingering about behind the storm system today, it has been quite windy at times with some stronger gusts being felt, especially across northern and western Maryland into West Virginia. We still have some wind gusts approaching 30 to 35 miles per hour up near Frederick, Cumberland, Hagerstown, even in D.C. at this hour. But that wind is starting to lighten up finally. And just in from the National Weather Service, all wind advisories, all high wind warnings have been canceled. So we are starting to see that wind even die down as we move forward into the night here folks much calmer as we move ahead here this evening with a sky that will start to clear out so the clouds we've had around will be breaking up as we head into the night temperatures will fall into the 30s and we will catch one quiet day tomorrow before we see that next storm system that arrives on Friday. We'll have the details of what that storm system could bring to the DMV and what you should expect heading into the weekend coming up here in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. Parents in Washington County, Maryland, said they're frustrated with the public school systems over yesterday's storms. Parents in the Hancock area say the decision to not close schools was wrong and unsafe. 
Today, Washington County Public Schools sent an email to parents on why they kept a normal schedule. The school system wrote that they received several forecasts saying that they would be a brief period of snow and sleet followed by rain and that it wouldn't have much of an impact on the roads. One parent says that she would have kept her child at home. It's the western part of Hancock that really received the precipitation um, as far as accumulation. Um, but I can, I can say that as a parent, I would have kept my children home. It's disheartening to me that they sent out an email saying that uh, the safety of uh, teachers, bus drivers, and children are paramount. And that was not anything close to this, the decision that was made yesterday. And we're going to have more on the flood damage in Western Maryland. That's coming up the next half hour. Yeah. Well, it's been nearly a month since Monumental Sports announced that its plans to move the Washington Wizards and the Caps to Alexandria. And right now we're learning new information about what is needed before that proposal is approved and final. Meanwhile, D.C. leaders maintain that they want the teams to remain at Capital One Arena in downtown Washington. D.C. News Now's Dave Laval joins us live from the Wilson Building where a council committee discussed the issue. And Dave, what will it take for Monumental Sports to actually leave the district? Well, good afternoon to you, Annalisa and Mark. It is definitely no secret. Monumental Sports wants to move the Capitals and the Wizards to that new planned arena in 2028. The thing is, Monumental has a lease with the district that extends well beyond that. The lease involving Capital One Arena is set to expire in 2047. However, Monumental has an option to break the lease early if it pays off the bonds owned on the arena. Right now, that's about $35 million. But Monumental would have to pay an additional seven to $8 million if it pays off the bonds early, according to the district. DC's Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development told the committee this afternoon there's another obstacle facing Monumental Sports. They have an exclusivity requirement that the teams continue to play at Capital One Arena, uh, the Wizards and the Capitals. The same is true of um, the Entertainment and Sports Arena at St. Elizabeth's. Um, the Mystics and GoGo -Go needs to continue to um, perform and play uh, at um, the ESA. Monumental wants to move the Mystics to Capital One Arena. Another issue to be resolved is who gains control of Capital One Arena if a breach is found to have taken place regarding the lease. We're going to take a closer look at that coming up at 5 o'clock. For now, though, we're live at the Wilson Building. Dave Laval, DC News Now. All right, Dave, thank you. Well, happening now, members have officially been sworn in to the 2024 General Assembly session, which is officially now underway. In a press conference today, Democrats in both the House and Senate unveiling their 2024 priorities, which they say include increasing funding for K-12 through education, protecting abortion and voting rights, as well as other things there. Republican leadership didn't agree to an interview, but a spokesperson sent us a list of bills he considers a priority. They include measures to get rid of a law that ties Virginia's election, Virginia's vehicle emissions rather standards to California's and a bill to strengthen penalties on those who deal fentanyl. This state spends 14 percent less than the national average on K through 12 in the state that has the 10th highest per capita income in America. And from our perspective, that's completely outrageous. Governor Glenn Youngkin is currently unveiling his 2024 priorities in his State of the Commonwealth address. Well, also new in the district here at 4 tonight, there is a new push to address how traffic ticket, 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 traffic ticket fines, Mark, are enforced. The city has long struggled to collect and parking and speeding fines, many of which double after 30 days without payment. But one council member, Annalisa, thinks that he has a solution to a decades-old problem. Our Randy Bass is live along Connecticut Avenue in DuPont Circle tonight with the details. Good evening, Randy. Yeah, Mark Annalisa, good evening. Councilmember Trayon White put it pretty simply today in his new proposal. Someone who doesn't want to pay a $100 parking ticket or 
traffic infraction ticket today probably isn't going to want to pay a $200 ticket in a month or two when that ticket doubles in price. It's called ticket doubling and it's something that council member Trayon White really wants to change. He says right now the system is punitive for people who are already struggling financially. He also says that the current ticket enforcement system is an equity issue here in the district, saying that most of the district's automated cameras are sending tickets to drivers in predominantly black and brown DC neighborhoods. White's new plan would create a ticket amnesty program, waiving those doubled fines and giving DC drivers a chance to settle their ticket debts. It could have a huge impact. Right now, there are millions of unpaid tickets in the district, totaling more than a billion dollars in unpaid fines over the last 25 years. Both white and drivers we talked to say it's time for the system to change. Nothing about ticket doubling is reasonable. Why well, should I have to pay twice the amount for the same infraction? So it's just ineffective policy and it's predatory. When you think you have found parking, it's really not the place where you should park, but the, the signs are very confusing when you're trying to park here. So a lot of the times I think people get tickets really because it's just hard to understand the signs. A lot of times it's contradicting. I think what really is the issue is just coming up with a better system that's suitable for other people. And I think people really shouldn't be penalized because of that. Yep, those tricky DC parking signs definitely cause a lot of trouble for drivers, but parking tickets aren't the only tickets that could be cut in half under this new bill from council member Trey on white. We're also talking about speed camera tickets, red light cameras and stop sign camera tickets. All of those tickets which have been doubled in the past could be slashed in half back down to their regular fine amount. Annalisa. All right, Randy, and we're also learning most of those unpaid fines are from drivers who don't even live in the district. What does the council plan on doing about that? Yeah, Annalisa, a lot of those drivers with unpaid tickets don't live very far, though. Today, Trayon White said about $600 million of those unpaid tickets are assessed to Maryland drivers. The problem is, he says the D.C. Attorney General doesn't have the authority to go after drivers in other states. And without that reciprocity, there may not be much to be done about that. For now, though, live in Northwest, I'm Randy Bass, D.C. News Now.